Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear people of God, welcome. Today is a glorious, beautiful day. We couldn't ask for nicer weather. Yesterday, you couldn't say the same. It was rainy and dreary in the day, but it wasn't as bad as we expected. I spent some time in the morning at the church and in the afternoon as I left, I happened to drive by on my way home a park and something caught my eye. As I looked at the park, I saw a bunch of teenagers kicking around a soccer ball. They had a pickup game and it brought back fond memories and also sadness as I looked and saw the kids playing in the fields. You see, earlier this week, we got word that because of the COVID-19 pandemic, particularly here in Nassau County, that they will not have any sports programs in the schools here in Nassau County for the remainder of 2020. And many of the athletes in our schools are quite upset. The football season, the soccer season, the girls lacrosse, volleyball, possibly basketball, all of them are being put off. And for me, when I was a kid, sports were very important. Um, I found them to be just as important as the classroom. So it brings me great sadness to see that these kids won't be able to enjoy the things and the lessons that you learn dealing on the playing field. You learn about sportsmanship, teamwork. You learn about failure. You learn about who you are, what your strengths are, what your abilities are and where you need improvement. And you learn about humility. These are life lessons that can be found and I as a jock as a kid and my family, that's something that was so important. And the kids that I saw out on that field, picking up a game, brought back those memories and the sad reality that they won't be able to do that this year. It also brought back some pleasant joys as I thought about my youth. And as they were out there playing in the mud, getting all dirty, it recalled memories of uh, my brother Glenn and I going out there, whatever we were doing, playing ball at the end, no matter what was happening, we would go home and we'd cross that threshold and we would hear those words, that command, take off your shoes. There was no way that our mother was going to permit us to trample in the mud from the sports fields all over the house. Take off your shoes. Now that's a command that I expect those kids that were out playing soccer in the mud will hear once they returned home. But it wasn't just the muddy feet, take off your shoes because of the dirt and the mud that we heard those things. You see, after Glenn and I would get into the house, you'd probably turn on the TV and you'd hear the similar message about the neighborhood kids, the neighborhood. You see, on television, there'd be that nice, pleasant gentleman telling us about how wonderful his neighborhood was and what a wonderful day it was in the neighborhood. And as he's singing and sharing the beauty of his surroundings, he too is taking off his shoes. What a wonderful day in the neighborhood. Take off your shoes. Today's reading is a famous lesson in the Bible. Moses appears before the burning bush. It's considered one of the top 10 stories that everyone knows in scripture. But isn't it interesting? Those words after God calls Moses twice, the emphasis, Moses, Moses calls his name. The first thing he directs him to do, remove your sandals. This is a sacred place. Take off your shoes, Moses. Don't bring that mud into the house. Yes, we understand it is a sacred place. It is always a sacred place 
to be in the presence of God. And to be in a sacred place is something that we've understood for generations, and many, reason, many religions practice that. Our brothers and sisters in the Muslim faith, for one, take off their shoes before they enter their sanctuary out of reverence to the Holy One. It's a practice. But it's interesting that Moses hears those words from God before anything else. Take off your shoes. And it's a command, not because his feet were dirty, but maybe it was for another reason. Other religions, other cultures, and we know the Japanese are quite familiar with this practice. In Japan, any home you enter, any place of business, the culture tells you that you are to remove your shoes. This practice has been going on for generations and generations. And recently, a poll was taken. Sometimes we do things and we don't know why. We just do it because it's always been done that way. Well, a questionnaire went out to the Japanese community and they asked them, why do you think you're asked to remove your shoes when you enter a place? 82% of the responses came back with two answers. Number one, because your feet were dirty and you don't want to bring the dirt in, just like my mom didn't want us coming through the house with the muddy feet. Cleanliness. And number two, comfort. Comfort. You want to be comfortable. And you think about when you enter your home and you take off your shoes, whether directed to do so or not, at the end of a long day, you come home, you take off your shoes, you may place slippers on or sneakers as Mr. Rogers would, or you may have bare feet or just your socks, but it's comfort. You see, you cross the threshold and you're in a place, a sanctuary, if you will, where you are yourself. No pretentious attitudes, no attitudes of trying to be what you're not or portray things. You are home, you're in comfort. You can let your hair down, you can be who you are. And maybe, just maybe, that was an invitation that God was giving Moses. Cross the threshold. Be in this holy space. Remove your sandals. Be comfort in the presence of I am, the Holy One. It's interesting how we get home. We leave the mud behind, everything that we deal with, the pollution of the world, and we're comfortable. We are who we are. God, I am who I am. We are who we are. No false pretenses. It's a time when we're comfortable alone and we can be ourselves. Maybe Moses is being told by God, in my presence, be yourself. And in front of that burning bush, the voice of God comes out. And the honesty that we often have when we're alone in our private solitudes, moments when we question. Moses questions God. Why me? Why are you picking me? How am I going to do this? I don't have the ability. I don't have the wherewithal to do what you're asking. And what about you? Who are you? What am I supposed to say about you? Who's going to believe me? He's debating. He's quarreling. He's questioning God. He's comfortable enough to ask God. And God first begins by saying, take off your shoes. Be comfortable in my presence. I will be with you. I will be with you. Be comfortable. God is with us all the time. And the message God gives us is, I will be with you. Take off your shoes. Be yourself. 
no matter where you are, when you go back into that dirty world, when you go back, when you deal with the muck, the pollution, all the problems, all the issues we deal with, when you leave your place of comfort, your homes, your solitude, when we go back to the pandemic, when we go back to the protests, when we go back to the shootings, when we go back to the politics, when we go back to the divisiveness, know that you are with God with or without your shoes, God tells us, I will be with you. Moses hears those words. And we Christians, those words mean so much to us. Take off your shoes, but I will be with you. We Christians, look to the great commission that Jesus left us with as he returned. The final words that Jesus rings so true, and they're so similar to the words that Moses heard. I will be with you to the end of the ages. The words of Jesus, the words Moses heard, take off your shoes, be comfortable in the presence of God, feel the holy space around you, go out, Deal with God's blessing and know no matter what you do, I will be with you. I am who I am. The sports will return. The battles will return. The integrity that we have in our own privacy will be there. It's a beautiful place in the neighborhood. It's a beautiful place on the sports field. Whether you're wearing shoes or not, know that God is always with you. Be comfortable. Relax. Take off your shoes in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, keep our hearts and minds in true faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.